I'm Stephen Foskett, the organizer of Tech Field Day, and we are here in lovely uh, Silicon Valley for Storage Field Day 11. The video you're about to see is a discussion between a panel of invited uh, social media influencers, bloggers, podcasters, writers, speakers from around the world who came together with interesting companies in their space to listen to presentations, but also to interact. If you'd like to be part of this, please go to techfieldday.com. You can learn more about becoming a presenter or a delegate at a future Tech Field Day event. You can also find videos like this one on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash techfieldday. So as Gary stated, I was actually the storage technologist at eBay. Um, I helped them win the 2015 <laughs> Flash Memory Summit Award. But what people don't realize, eBay was one of the first adopters of Hadoop Big Data. We have tens of petabytes of transactionals, tens of petabytes of NFS, so storage is second nature to me. Well, what I've been doing in the uh, recent years is more looking at the rest of the industry, looking at where storage is going. And now that the three companies, Western Digital, HGST, and SanDisk, it's together, the type of storage capabilities we can build becomes very interesting. So I only have one slide, and this is a little bit more interactive. If there's uh, areas you want to go into as I describe the slide, I'm going to be using the whiteboard uh, to go into more detail. So this is the slide that I use uh, to a lot of our large at scale customers. What WD currently provides and what we're trying to provide in the industry as we move forward it starts off with a very simple concept, which is raw storage as a service. When you look at um, the types of storage we have, we basically are the leaders in hard disk drives. We are now a, you know, WD is now a flash and SSD fab and uh, packager and uh, provider. And we are also in the process of creating our own non-volatile memory capability with our uh, RERAM capabilities, which we believe is uh, better at scaling to higher densities and lower cost point than uh, Intel's cross point. But when you look at this type of building blocks, what, you're, what you see is the possibility of being able to create a rich disaggregated storage platform. And we're in this journey today of creating that. As um, Gary mentioned, our InfiniFlash fits perfectly here. It has management monitoring, it provides literally raw storage, raw flash capabilities to service attached to it through SaaS cables. As we move forward in the industry, these types of platforms will provide NVMe over fabric, it will provide uh, all these different types of protocols, whether it's ISER, iSCSI, NVMe over fabric, SAS, NVMe directly, whether it goes from our platform directly to one of our OEMs, whether it goes to your own SDS play, or whether we take it up one level higher and create our own systems and solutions above that. <coughs> A good example is uh, InfiniFlash, with Ceph, we've been pushing uh, InfiniFlash with Ceph. We have significant traction in the industry. A lot of our customers are using um, InfiniFlash with Ceph block in their cloud architecture. And as it continues on, we're here to pretty much use our products to provide solutions for our customers. ICER is another one. You're slightly slower, but at the when it comes down to it. What's 25, you know, 10, 15 microseconds versus 25, 50 microseconds when you're at that space? Unless you're doing like uh, stock market trading, most users only care about 200, 250 microsecond latencies. We're looking at, because we own all these capabilities and we have the key knowledge of how these devices work, how to optimize these devices and understanding the things we could do with these devices, the things that we're looking at is, is literally data placement, tiering, and data movement within these types of devices. Whether it's done at this layer, whether it's done at this layer, or whether it's done at an application layer, we look at the entire aspect. A good example is if you decided to use InfiniFlash or our disk-based model or even our components as a component for a NoSQL platform. You don't want to put a RAID system or a replication on top of that if the consistency and availability is being done on no, no SQL. So the raw storage without protection goes directly to your 
application level. But at the same time, if you have a high performance database and you need to have high availability, let's say you want to go to, forget five nines. Five nines is, you know, yesterday, the customers we're talking to, they want nine nines and greater. But you can't do that if you're deploying five nine systems because it's just too expensive. You take a five nine system at $10 a gigabyte and you replicate across data centers and you replicate it within the data centers to get you higher availability, you're at 40 plus dollars per gigabyte. You take those 5.9 systems, drop them to a 3.9 system, whether it's one of our systems or one of our partner systems, you replicate it locally at the, at the vertical integration capabilities we can give. The cost point there is significantly less. You could uh, aspire to a 9.9 system literally under you know, $8 a gigabyte. Uh, if we had our way uh, and Fast forward about a year from now, you you know the goal would be to try to create a 9.9 system for under five dollars a gigabyte, and that's without dedupe or compression. But those are the possibilities you can have, especially with our customers. When I was at eBay, you know, when there's a failure of a shard of a uh, transactional system, the, that failure every minute costs money. When you look at five nines across these systems, you're deploying hundreds of these systems at a scale out infrastructure. Let's put a monetary value at a minute. Let's say a minute costs you a million dollars. You have a hundred storage arrays and they're all five nines. Within a year, that's $15 million per storage array. You could have an impact of over you know, $150 million in your infrastructure if they all failed. And so, yes, go ahead. I don't want to take you off that train of thought. So can you finish that? But then I have a question I want to ask about sure. what you said earlier. Well, what I was going to say is that if you look at the type of infrastructure that has to be put in place to support that and the other processes you have to put in place to guarantee the availability, today with the current patterns, it's very expensive. But as you move forward to the higher performance networking, the types of service offering we're going to offer both on-prem and potentially in the clouds with our partners, whatever, we could reduce that cost significantly. Earlier, earlier in the presentation, you said something along the lines of either reram or 3D NAND was better than Crosspoint. So expand on that just a little bit. When you look at the architecture of Crosspoint and the way Intel has described it, now, again, they're not very open with a lot of the description on it. When we, we look at our reram technology, we, we look at their public information, we look at what we can do. We believe that our reRAM technology has a better ability to scale at lower cost than their technology. How? how why? Well, that is a different uh, business unit. If you want to go into detail there, uh, I could probably dig up the information, but it will be after this because I don't think that's public information today. Okay? Sure. So, again, the, the key in a lot of our uh, capabilities here, and I'm going to go to the whiteboard for this, is a very simple model that people uh, understand, at least in the back of their minds. And it's literally, basically, value over time. So what you'll see is, and they said black works better, but it doesn't seem to work at all. <laughs> What you'll see is today, the cost of infrastructure is at that point. As you see the flash costs and hard drive costs transition the future, what we're seeing is the amount of data that you can save over time is going to be a lot more. So the value of the data over time is key. When you look at something like video surveillance, 30 days is usually the, the standard you know, two weeks, 30 days. When you start looking at the architecture to store that over time, sometimes it's too expensive. Today, the, the, the breakpoint's 50 cents a gigabyte for video surveillance, that's at the high end. Um, the, the moment those types of infrastructure drops in cost, people are gonna be able to save longer and do more with that data. And what we're trying to do is create the optimal system to be able to ingest high resolution camera, 4K, 8K, whatever, wherever it's going, with, in addition with the networking, to be able to save it for a longer period of time because of our cost model, 
because of vertical integration, and then have the innovation above it to be able to take that data and run analytics on it, whether it's within our system, whether it's uh, 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 one of the architecture we're pushing is a uh, data lake model where the information is stored into our, inf into our system and there are analytics engine adjacent to our system that can pull that data, analyze it, push it back and go back and forth. And in fact, one of the first implementation of that is using our active archive products, which Phil will be talking about. So I'm going to hand it over to Phil unless there's questions about this. I didn't talk about uh, protection levels and advanced data management because that's implied that this is the raw storage where we provide quality of service management and monitoring as we go up the stack the advanced data management protection level is put in there. We have examples of that today with our partners, with uh, Nixenta, Tejile. We're working with other partners as well as creating our own stacks to uh, provide that with Ceph and other software stacks. We can also run it in a cloud model. And we have OEM partners like IBM. They announced a Deep Flash 150, which allows you scale out capability. But those advanced data management have value to a certain part of the, of, of the industry. In other areas of the industry, they're looking more at the raw storage as a service and then layering applications above it. 